Today we're talking soft skills, specifically how to take control of your temper and anger. How do I know? Well, I've done it despite having uh, genetic tendencies and a family with uh, a lot of, sometimes a big lot of temper. So let's just get started with these five tips. Um, and this stuff is really important, guys. These types of soft skills will have a bigger impact than you'll expect in your career and your income. I've heard it from many people and this will be very helpful. Controlling your emotions means being able to make the more optimal choice, not just the reactive choice, which leads to better results. So in terms of one area of emotional control that I think I'm very good at, I'm not perfect, I'm still working on it, but I, I think I'm very good at and I've gotten much better is anger control. And I think a lot of that um, I'm very proud of because uh, I come from a uh, world where I saw other people in my family and elsewhere who would just let it go out of control, which would lead to often irrational, hurtful actions, emotionally and so forth. Um, so how do you actually control your emotions? Uh, tip number one, really understand the consequences and the negative effects. I think some of it is just lack of a strong conviction to do this because they don't know the negative effects. Some people are just like, what? what's wrong with anger? And therefore, they don't have that strong conviction to improve it. If I told you I'll give you a million dollars if you work on this, all of a sudden you have a stronger conviction to do it. For me, I observed classmates, other people, uh, who just would let their anger take control. They would take it too far, smash things, say things they, wouldn't, they would regret later, um, and get into fights or uh, arguments that really left a uh, nasty effect. Uh, some people watching this might be like, ooh, I, might, I want some more specific detail about your family life. No, I'm, I'm going to say no, I'm not going to share that with you. But uh, the point is that conviction is very uh, valuable. Tip number two, um, in terms of controlling your anger, cooling down is so important. And so you have to uh, take some time to cool down before you act. I have done this to great effect on numerous occasions. Whether it's a nasty YouTube comment or something or someone in uh, real life uh, doing something bad to me, cutting me off on the road or saying something that really pisses me off, I give myself that time to cool down because that's oftentimes the biggest thing you can do to really change yourself. Um, I understand how much of a fool's game it is to try and act rationally in the heat of the moment. So cooling down is one of the best strategies to really getting control of your emotions. Number three, and this is pivotal too, double the amount of time you think you need to cool down, at least. I learned this through uh, my, my, uh, my family at first because I heard that tip and then I was like, well, is that a good tip or just an opinion? Who knows if that's the right thing to do? But then later through books and research, I found this is actually a very effective tactic. Um, one of the best things um, related to this was a uh, study that was uh, revealed in uh, a few books I read by John Gottman, who is a highly acclaimed and respected marriage uh, scientific researcher. He's very su successful and well known because he has a like not, something like 95% success rate in predicting divorce through his specific research and empirical uh, studies. Whereas the average marriage counselor has about a 50% chance of predicting divorce, which is no better than a coin flip. And he did this through uh, decades of specific systematic research on the details of uh, marriage. I bring this up because one tip he has through his research is how... Um, couples really let the anger destroy their relationships and how when they try and cool down and, th and talk about it more rationally, they often need a lot more time than they think. They think 15 minutes, 13 minutes is enough. But through his uh, 
assessment and measuring of heartbeat, blood pressure, blood pulse, all these things that are indicative of a heightened angry state, he's found that you need like sometimes at least an hour before you're fully back to normal. And therefore, that really got me thinking. I need to double, sometimes triple my cool down duration time. Tip number four, uh, anger is something that uh, is a beast, an animal, and you can channel it to more positive productive causes if you put your mind to it. So usually that often just comes out in this raw unhinged state which often leads to oftentimes ineffective things being said you know um, and uh, I'll give you an example you know uh, there was times where I was angry when uh, negotiating rent because of just how the other person came across how they delivered certain things they wanted which were sometimes unreasonable in terms of price duration and if I had just shot out what I thought, it would not have really had a impactful effect. It would have just pissed them off because I would have just said, you know, I don't like this, screw you, and that's not fair, this is what I want. And it's coming from it from a very primal, selfish state. However, if I let myself calm down and then use this motivation to get this fixed, um, I can channel that to much more productive and effective things. So after I calm down for an hour, maybe even a day, all of a sudden I can, you know, I still have all this energy. I can use effective negotiation tactics, which are often the opposite of this primal reactive selfish response. It's more about tactical empathy and uh, uh, mirroring and all this other stuff that really positions it and finds a, a, a rhythm with the other person that builds rapport, uh, comes off with a friendly tone, all these things I've learned from negotiation books. And all of a sudden, I'm using that initial anger and that remaining energy in a more effective way that will lead to a better negotiation and potentially better outcome with the, the rent, with the housing. Um, and that leaves us to number five, understanding anger holistically. Understanding that it is not completely a bad thing, not completely a good thing. Uh, some people have a black and white view about anger and ego and they say, these are bad things. These just always lead to horrible actions. Why do they even exist? They're just sins or, or whatnot. But when you actually study evolutionary biology, you study psychology and all these things, you'd understand, you discover these have their places for a reason. They were developed over centuries as survival instincts. And while sometimes they can lead uh, to productive things in our ancestry, sometimes they run over in ineffective ways. Um, Later on, I ended up reading Bruce Lee's biography and I found, you know, at the time I, was, I had all these books and opinions from people. Uh, I mean, Jocko Willick, he talks about how anger is, is bad in his book, uh, uh, Extreme Ownership. And then you even have uh, Ryan Holiday writing a whole book titled Ego is the Enemy. But then I read, you know, Bruce Lee's biography and if he didn't have an ego and didn't want to be the star role in films and TV, he would have never n broke through Hollywood in a time where there's extreme discrimination and no Asian actors were ever uh, mainstream. So that ego, although it was a double-edged sword and cost him some relationships, it also pushed him ahead and really helped him leave a tremendous lasting mark on American and global culture. Um, so, same thing with anger, like if you use it effectively, it can be sometimes productive, other times not so productive. And so, you know, using that Bruce Lee example with ego, he let ego offend him and it ruined a few relationships. One with Steve McQueen, a very successful actor, 
uh, because you know after all that friendship basically Steve was unwilling to uh, help Bruce get a role in Hollywood he so still saw him as a personal trainer and that cost him a bridge burned but if Bruce had been one step ahead he could have used ego properly rather than just used it to his own whim natural instincts and reactions and he could have got the best of both worlds he could have kept that relationship with Steve didn't let that you know push push things over and used it effectively to push himself into Hollywood and thereby not turning it into a double-edged sword but just a pure benefit so I think seeing the full realistic view of anger it can really help you uh, have a fresh perspective. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, hopefully you liked. As you can see, I am looking at YouTube comments and giving giving some uh, improvements and tweaks to my videos. Someone left a comment about how they wanted more personal specific examples um, that would help more because they were too vague. And I try to do that a little bit more with some of these examples here, but of course, you know, if sometimes they can get too personal and I don't want to reveal that. Now, if you want still more specific examples, perhaps I can give you some in the comments below uh, in terms of other areas of my life and then give you some ex specific uh, detailed examples. But I figured that was good enough for now. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe and comment.